he's going to get so angry at General Sherman. So Sherman is going to make an enemy. And Palmer, in mid-August, says, I want out of here. I'm not going to serve under General Sherman any longer. He shows a preference for West Pointers. He says a, he's showing precedent preference for General Schofield, the commander of the Army of Ohio. I've been a brigadier general longer, than, I've been a major general longer than he is, and he says Sherman doesn't observe rules and regulations and discriminates against volunteers. So he's going to resign and run for and be elected governor of Illinois. Now his division is the same as it was at Stones River, three brigades. William Hazen, who we're with here now. Hazen, we met him this morning. He's the man that commands the men who drift down the river. He despises George Armstrong Custer because when Custer graduates from West Point, Hazen is commandant on the cadets and in his mind Custer has violated duty, honor, and country and should be kicked out of West Point. He's violated the West Point honor system. Because on the day he graduates from West Point, as last in the class of 1862, uh, being graduated one year and two weeks early. He's going to of the day, and there's a disturbance in the barracks. And as officer of the day, duty, honor, and country require in the West Point honor system, he turns it in. But he doesn't. He covers it up. Hazen finds out about him, and he doesn't care whether it's the 22nd day of June. He wants him thrown out of West Point, not to be graduated. He has violated the honor system. But... Dear. They're on the eve of the Battle of First Manassas. So Custer's luck holds with him, which will hold with him until June 25th, 1876. And Hazen gets overruled by the superintendent, or else Custer would have been out on his ass on the last day at West Point. So he will never like Custer because he, he Custer has beaten the system. So by, the, by 1876, he's chief signal officer in the Army in the United States. And he probably thinks if it hadn't been for those 240 men with him, Custer got his just desserts at the Little Bighorn. So this is a real cover. We're going to hear a lot about him tomorrow when we're doing the uh, the uh, 20th. So his men arrive here at 12:30. They're part of Palmer's division, and they'd all been together. And Hazen had been one of the heroes of Stones River. So the three brigade commanders are Gross, Croft and Hazen, the same as they were at the Little Bighorn. The fighting has now, the morning's fighting has shifted from Winry's Field. Winry's Field we talked about, the, mor the, day, the morning's fighting, and then we talked about the close of the day's fighting. Now the Confederates are committing their strongest numerically strongest division. 
It's commanded by a man I mentioned today, uh, Ben Frank Cheatham. He had fought, he is not, he is a politician. He is not a West Pointer. He had fought in the American-Mexican War with a mediocre record. With the outbreak of the Civil War, he has a rapid rise. He's a heavy drinking man. So I always like to name him as we have Ben Franklin Cheatham. Heavy drinking, womanizing, profane. And one time, Bishop Polk will say, a bishop cannot use profanity. At the Battle of Perryville, he will tell his men, give them what General Cheatham says. <laughs> and after the war, when Jack Daniel starts his distillery, the best man he can get, if he wants a Confederate officer, that's known to be a, a, a aficionado of corn liquor, he gets Cheatham to endorse his selection. He commands a big division, five brigades, and the men in four of the five brigades are all from the tan state of Tennessee. So the army is named Army of Tennessee, so he's very popular with his men. So he is going to cross the uh, Chickamauga at Dalton's Ford. The next Ford up from Thedford's Ford about 11 o'clock and comes forward with three of his brigades in advance. Strolls, Jackson's, and Preston Smith's. Two brigades in support, and they meet the enemy, Palmer's men in this area here. And the fighting is rather desperate. The Confederates have superior numbers, but Palmer holds his own along with his men. This brigade became engaged at 12.30 p.m. northwest of the Brock Road, the, uh, 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 of Brock's field. So they become engaged first northwest of here. Northwest is that direction. And steadily fought their way forward. They're fighting their way forward. Who are they driving back? Cheatham's men. They're going to fight their way forward. But the action continued with severity until after 3 p.m. At that hour, Hazen's brigade was relieved by Turchin and retired to the vicinity of the Poe House, near where we'll see the Georgia Monument. Now, Turchin commands a brigade in J.J. Reynolds' division. J.J. Reynolds will have a rough career after the war. He gets on General Crook's S list at the Battle of the Powder River on a very cold March day in 1876 and doesn't do well. So Crook will take action encouraging Reynolds to retire from the Army when he's not ready to. So Reynolds will have with him two of his three brigades. You'll have Turchin's Brigade, the best known. Now, if you were, if you lived in Russia before Gorbachev, 
he would be your favorite Civil War soldier among, if you're a good member of the Communist Party. Why is that? He is a colonel in the Tsar's army. He decides he doesn't like the Tsar's army and he'll marry a countess. And she is also a communist. And they're active communists, so they have to flee Russia and settle in the United States. Turchin's name is Basil, Basil, which is John Turchinoff. So when he comes to the United States, he changes his name to John Turchin. Someone was asking a bit about Buell. Buell doesn't think much of Turchin. When, the, when Turchin's brigade captures Athens, Georgia, excuse me, Athens, Alabama, he does like you do in Russia. He tells his soldiers, for the next hour I turn my back. In other words, like they do in the Russian army. They turn the town over to the soldiers to do whatever they want, you know, whatever they want, and perhaps if a couple of women get raped, they get raped. Bad luck. And uh, Buell will cashier Turchin. Now Lincoln has to deal with the Countess, his wife. She catches a train to New York, to Washington, D.C., and tells how Lincoln, how her husband's misunderstood. And anyway, Buell does not support the president's economic and political program, which involves emancipation. So he'll be returned to command. So in the fighting here, by about 3 o'clock, uh, General Palmer has to withdraw his men, to resupply them with ammunition, and the Confederates pull back to be replaced by our next stop by the Little Giants. So we're going up to join the Little Giants. And the Little Giants are going to come close to winning the battle for General Bragg on the 19th. The Little Giants are commanded by A.P. Stewart, West Point, 1842. He had taught mathematics at West Point before becoming a lawyer, and hence he's called Old Straight because he was a very strict teacher in mathematics, so I would have probably flunked him pretty fast. And he has a, brigade, a division who call themselves the Little Giants. We're going to talk about them at our next stop. And then we're going to join them as they break the Union line. Strange to say it's going to be the same place that Longstreet's going to break it on the 20th. But they're not supported. So we're going to join uh, General Stewart and the Little Giants at our next stop. And we're going to take a walk back into the woods. All right.